Hey everyone, welcome back to Bedra Station. You'll notice that there's no start credit. You know where I have the little bling thing where it goes bing because we're currently away. Uh, we're in Cyprus visiting my family, but I wanted to record this video before I got back because of the uh, Apple event uh, that happened in September this week. So I'll make sure that the light is focused on me and not of this beautiful view. You either get me or the view. It's my video, so I'm gonna choose me. So, um, this flies everywhere as well. Apple covered a few things um, this week in their September event. It's always an exciting time for me because that means uh, a new iPhone is being released. And then I start my campaign to persuade Rissy to buy a new iPhone. But what I'm gonna do is summarize what was presented and what is new as well. So first of all, Apple announced their new iPad. It's actually their ninth uh, generation iPad. They didn't change the external look of the iPad. Everything was internal. It now has an A13 Bionic chip, which means that it will be three times faster than a Chromebook and six times faster than any Android tablet. They bumped up the camera on the front to a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. And it comes with something new this year. It comes with center stage. So center stage uses machine learning to automatically focus on the person speaking within the camera. And if you start to move around, it will pan around with that person. And then if a second person moves in and starts talking, it will then begin to focus on them. It includes panning and zooming in, and it can be used with FaceTime. And they mentioned that um, it will be compatible with all the video conferencing apps such as Zoom as well. So this iPad starts with 64 gigabytes of storage, and there's also a new 256 gigabytes as well. So all the new iPad models that they advertise in this event uh, will be shipping with iOS 15. So you'll get to use features such as a new home screen design and integrated widgets for the first time and all the new features um, involving FaceTime calls as well. I'm gonna have a dedicated video talking about iOS 15 once it comes out. Apple also talked about the new iPad mini which is the sixth generation iPad mini. It's a completely new design inside and outside. There's no home button to take advantage of a uh, bigger screen and less bezel around the edges. So now it sports an 8.3 inch display, which is great. The display features wide color, anti-reflective coating. It also takes advantage of true tone as well. Now with this, this features the A15 Bionic chip meaning that it's up to 40% faster in CPU usage in comparison to the previous iPad mini and an even bigger 80% increase in GPU power too. For the first time, the iPad mini it will be able to use 5G technology with download speeds of 3.5 gigabytes per second. Even with 5G, Apple say that the battery lasts all day. So let's see uh, once uh, we get our hands on it and we can put that to the test. So for the iPad mini, for the first time, the lightning port has been removed in favor of a USB-C port, which is the same as the iPad Air, which was released last year. It's, Sorry. it's distracting. I, like, no, it's, it's fine, carry on. Sorry. It's fine, carry on. I didn't notice you were filming. Oh, you didn't? So like the iPad Air, there is no home button and there is no face ID either. What it does is incorporates the touch ID on the top power button. The good thing about it is that it's compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil. And more importantly, on the front, uh, it features a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera as well, benefiting with center stage. I'm gonna be keeping my eye on the iPad mini and I'm gonna be persuading someone to uh, let me get my hands on it. Maybe do an unboxing video as well. Something that I was very excited to uh, hear about was the Apple Watch 7. This year, it comes in slightly larger sizes. So in comparison to the 40 millimeter and 44 millimeter, it, it now comes in the 41 millimeter and 45 millimeter size as well. And it features a uh, new casing with a flat base 
with softer and more rounded corners. The screen uses 50% stronger crack resistant crystal, its strongest ever. And Apple says that with the narrow borders around the edges, this allows to display the maximum size area while not changing the dimensions of the watch itself. Talking about those borders, they've been reduced by 40%, which basically means that in comparison to the uh, Apple Watch 6, you got 20% more area to look at on your watch and over 50% more than the Apple Watch 3. So you can imagine how much space you can fit now on the watch itself. Apple also say that the always on display is up to 70% more brighter so that if you're, if you're not actively looking at it and it's on uh, always on mode, uh, it will be up to 70% brighter as well. The Apple Watch 7 is also gonna come with uh, two new watch faces too. So uh, one called Contour and the other called Modular Duo taking advantage of the much bigger screen space as well. It has an IP6X certification, which means it's dust and water resistant, along with the WR50 swimproof resistance as well. The Series 7 charges up to 30% faster. This is due to the new USB-C charging cable that it's going to ship with. This means that it allows from zero to 80% charging within 45 minutes. So maybe that will give people the opportunity to, to wear it, to mon monitor their sleep cycles as well. I've never been comfortable to wear it while I'm asleep. With the larger screen face as well, you'll also now be able to take advantage of a QWERTY keyboard. So um, I, I don't know how, this is probably gonna be very difficult for me, but you'll be able to use an actual keyboard on the Apple Watch. And it will come in five aluminium colors, midnight, starlight, green, blue, and product red. The stainless steel models are available in graphite, silver and titanium. And the most important thing is that the Series 7 is compatible with all previous wristbands as well. So all your previous wristbands that you use on your Apple Watches, they'll still all be valid, thank God. Apple also mentioned some updates to uh, Apple Fitness Plus. So they'll be adding Pilates to their fitness regime, along with guided meditations as well. Something new to Apple Fitness is group workouts. So using the new share play feature on iOS 15, uh, you'll be able to work out uh, with your friends. They'll also be adding seasonal themed workouts as well. For, so for ski season, for example, if you happen to go skiing, I'm not a big fan of skiing myself, but um, there's some workouts that will help train you in order to, to go skiing too. They'll also be upgrading the quality of the streaming service. So it will now be available in 4K and it will shortly be available in 15 more countries, including Brazil. So um, you can follow what's going on and there'll be subtitles available in those languages. Apple then finally got down to revealing the news about the new iPhone. It's going to be called the iPhone 13 and 13 mini. Exactly the same dimensions as the iPhone 12 and 12 mini. It will sport a, a new camera system with larger camera lenses in a new arrangement where it will allow 47% more light, a 26 millimeter focal length. And on the ultra wide cameras, it will sport a new sensor shift technology that it was using on the 12 Pros from last year. The biggest physical difference on the uh, iPhone 13 is that the notch is slightly smaller on the top. After three years, it's a welcome change. We're waiting for that notch to get down a little bit smaller so that we can have more display size. Apple says that it's 20% smaller, but I've already seen images where it's actually a little lower as well. So I think they've, they've tried to reduce it but as a result, went down a little bit as well, but only a tiny fraction. For the iPhone 13, the Super Retina XDR display is 28% brighter. And like the iPad mini, it's powered with the A15 Bionic chip. Now this is super technical, but it seems like uh, it's a brilliant selling point. This A15 Bionic chip features a six core CPU with two high performance, and four high efficiency cores. And then they claim that it's capable of 15.8 trillion operations per second. And I just use it for Instagram. With video recording, there's a new feature called cinematic mode, where it will focus on one person at the forefront of the lens. And then if there's someone behind them, it will then automatically focus on them. Like you see in the movies as well, how it pans uh, its focus. 
And the great thing about this is that you can change the focus even after recording, which is pretty awesome. So like the iPhone 12, it will also benefit from a ceramic shield on the front, which is something that I have found very useful over this past year. I rest it face down all the time with the, the confidence that it's not gonna scratch. So it's IP68 water resistant, and it comes in five new colors, pink, blue, midnight, starlight, and red. And they've done away with the minimum storage of 64 gigabytes. They now start at 128 gigabytes. And then last but no means least is the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. Again, it comes in exactly the same size and dimensions as the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max. This is a Pro Max, but it benefits from the 20% smaller notch at the top and an even brighter Super Retina XDR display as well. But the great new thing about the Pro series for iPhone 13 is that it has a new refresh rate of up to 120 megahertz. Now our phones usually do up to 60 megahertz. But now with 120, that means that um, scrolling is way smoother. Any video that you're watching will also be smoother and it's adaptive as well. So if you're scrolling, just as you as you see in the, in the demonstration videos, it adapts its refresh rate and Apple claims that it, this doesn't drain the battery any more than it would without. The rear camera now sports a new telephoto 77 millimeter ultra wide and wide lenses with larger sensors and apertures and uses sensor shift stabilization too. So that helps with um, camera shaking. Thanks to the new telephoto lens, which is three times more powerful, that means it features a six times optical zoom. And the ultra wide camera also benefits from autofocus as well. Something else which I'm super excited about is a new macro photography mode. That means that you can take pictures of things really close up, up, up to two centimeters away. So it'll be interesting to get some new shots of things up and close, just on my skin. With the iPhone 13 Pro, it benefits from the A15 Bionic chip. However, it's slightly better than the iPhone 13 A15 Bionic chip as it contains one extra GPU core. There's a new photo editing preference option called photographic styles. So you'll be able to tailor certain editing tools so that you can edit photos a lot faster as well. And the iPhone 13 Pro is available with one terabyte of storage. That's crazy. I don't understand why someone would need that much storage. However, I've got the option there now. And color wise, along with the options for graphite gold and silver, you now have Sierra Blue, which is the one I'm very interested to see. So there we have it. That's everything that was announced at the Apple event. There were a few things that I was sad to not hear about, which was the new AirPods. I wanted to hear more about them. And also uh, the release of iOS 15, which I believe, I had to look it up online, but I believe will be released on Monday the 20th. So that's it from me. I'm gonna continue to enjoy more of my holiday before I head back to rainy and cold London. But you'll hear from me next week and expect to see you. So don't forget to like and subscribe.